want to say that when I first heard the word empirical educator, I just loved that word because I realized it was a term to describe what I was that I'd never had before. So I am, I'm a psychologist, a behavioral scientist who specifically studies teaching and learning practices. Um, and so I feel like empirical educator is a great term to describe what I do. So I, I, I see an empirical educator as being a person who is an educator, so someone who um, whose career goals, whose professional focus is around educating others, and who wants to take a more systematic approach to that. An empirical educator, I think, is an educator, a teacher, a facilitator of learning, who pays attention to what the evidence has to say, what the research has to say, and tries to translate those insights into actionable practices in, in the classroom. So someone who he likes to use data in lots of shapes and forms in order to inform their own choices, to inform the decisions that they're making in the classroom. And maybe those data are informal. Maybe it's simple getting feedback surveys from students about how things are going, about their interests and motivations. That would be a way to be an empirical educator. Um, but you can, and I think I do, and many of the people I've met really take this to a whole other level where it's you can even do very systematic data collection, you can do experiments, you can really use scientific methods um, to have a deeper analysis of what's going on in the classroom, to be able to inform your own teaching practices, and also to learn things that can help other people inform their teaching practices as well. To my mind, it is about being a more evidence-driven teacher. And I use the word evidence rather than research because I think that brings a broader spectrum of different approaches to the table that can be applied. But if I had to translate that, I think what I think it means is you have to be outcomes focused in terms of what you're trying to achieve for your students. It means you've got to um, draw on evidence about what works in terms of how you design, be it your class, your product or whatever type of intervention you're looking at. And I think it means you've got to be focused on building evidence of impact. Coming from an access institution, we have a lot of really critically reflective educators um, and really helping those individuals work with data-informed decisions as they enhance teaching and learning and reflect on their practice. So using data and the scientific method to inform their teaching and improve their teaching for better student outcomes. To me, there's you know several kind of methods in which empirical education could take place. I mean, one is the group of people that you all have assembled here who are going to do primary research, but I think there's a much wider group that can benefit from that, that work, whether it's something they formally do, whether they formally read it and look at studies, or there are many people in many institutions that don't have time, they don't have the luxury of being able to read and apply research. They're teaching five sections, they're teaching you know, large groups of students, and their choice is to pay attention to their students or pay attention to research, they're gonna pay attention to their students. But at the end of the day, we, we hope they can pay attention to students better. There's ways and affordances that we can bring through educational technology to kind of implement and realize that research whether or not people have the time to use it. Empirical education is important, but it needs to be translatable for faculty who are just not data nerds, you know? And so they need to be able to take these, these practices, sometimes through stories, so it's not necessarily always fully quantitative, but it may be qualitative or case study based research that helps to inform what they're doing. And by telling those stories within the institution, Here's, how, here's what I did to change the way I was teaching a course, and here's the impact it had on my students. That's the way to get other faculty to adopt that. So there's a lot of, of there's a social layer there that helps to transform the institution through this research that doesn't always get communicated through some of the more formal channels. I think an empirical educator can also just be any person who is willing to use science, to use data even collected by someone else. Um, to inform their decisions. So you don't even have to be a data collector to be an empirical educator. You could be someone who reads journals that share research findings. You could be someone who speaks to colleagues who have done experiments and who uses what they've learned to inform what you're doing. You know, for example, not everybody, you know, many people are interested in and like analytics and like data, and then there's other people who don't. 
but they want the benefits, they want the results. It's similar to having you know, your Fitbit on your hand or your, or your Apple Watch, which you have on your wrist, um, you know, that we don't actually need to know everything about the algorithms and the studies that, that we're using that, that are underlie that, although we make that available and we can make that known, but many people actually just, they wanna know, do I need to take more steps today or what are the kinds of things I should do? I think an empirical educator is an educator who is reflective on their practice, uses their experience and data from other instructors, other educators, to drive what they do every day in the classroom, and I think links together their own work to this broader set of questions that we're all asking about how to improve education. Doesn't see themselves isolated from this broader research community, the broader professional and disciplinary communities, but sees their practice as embedded in those communities and as potentially contributing, benefiting from and contributing to those communities.